My name's Brandon and this is Nickelodeon Video Game History, a show where I take a look back on all the video games based on Nickelodeon shows and retrospectively review them. We're pressing pause on the chronological journey through Nickelodeon games for a moment because a brand new Nick game has just launched. And boy, is it right up my alley. If you've been following the channel for some time, you'll know I love crossovers and I love kart races. When the two are combined, Nickelodeon Kart Races 2 Grand Prix was released on October 6, 2020 for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. It will also be playable on the Xbox Series X later this year, kind of making it the first ever next-gen Nickelodeon game. As you can tell from the title, this is a sequel. The original Nick Kart Races was released in October of 2018, which was actually a bit of a revival of the Nickelodeon Kart Racing series. The first Nick Kart Racer, Nick Toons Racing, was released for the Game Boy Color in 2000, before coming to the PlayStation 1 and Game Boy Advance in slightly different packages. A sequel, titled Nicktoons Winner's Cup Racing, was released exclusively for PC in 2006. Even stranger is that the last racing title before its revival in 2018 was Nicktoons Nitro, a game designed purely for arcades. That's right, actual in-person arcades. Grand Prix has been developed by Bamtang Games, just like the original was. Glad to see the original developer hasn't been booted from the sequel, which is usually the tradition when it comes to these kinds of games based on animated shows. Bamtang are a developer located in Peru, so good on them for scoring such a high-profile gig. Their only notable console game outside of the Nick Kart Racer series was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Mega Battle, which received less than stellar reviews. The publishers for this game were Game Mill Entertainment in North America and Maximum Games in Europe. Will Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 be a fun alternative to Mario Kart and Crash Team Racing, or will the wheels fall off? The biggest and most common critique about the original Nickelodeon Kart Races was its startling lack of content. It was slammed for this, and when you take a close look, it's easy to see why. It featured just 12 characters to choose from, covering a pathetic 4 franchises. That's worse than what we saw with Cartoon Network Speedway. Heck, it was worse than what Nicktoons Racing did back in 2000. This is something Bamtang has aimed to address right off the bat. Grand Prix boasts 30 playable characters as well as 70 crew members, with 12 different Nicktoons featured on the roster. It's also got Jojo Flippin' Siwa here. I know who I'm choosing as my main. Unfortunately, our girl Jojo can't be chosen right away. As you usually see in a game like this, much of the roster is locked at the very start. You start the game with 16 characters to choose from, but winning in the game's various modes, you will slowly fill out the entire roster. While winning is good enough to unlock new characters and crew members, you'll be collecting coins during races to purchase the other unlockables. Like all of the recent Mario Kart entries, your race vehicles are highly customizable. Before every race, you'll pick your cart, engine, exhaust, and wheels, all of which have differing stats. You'll also be able to choose from a bunch of unique paint jobs, however these have no actual effect other than looking pretty cool. To complement the hefty roster is an equally large set of tracks to zip around. By my count, there are 28 tracks to race on. Not quite on the level of the recent high profile kart races to release, but still plenty of content for Nick fans. These tracks show off plenty of iconic Nicktoons locations, and because the shows included here are so diverse, you never get the feeling that heaps of tracks are similar. There's even a track based on Space Madness from Ren and Stimpy. Even in a game that has just released in 2020, I still can't escape that episode. Because there are so many characters to unlock and parts to buy, you have a constant stream of new stuff unlocking. It's great motivation to keep players engaged and playing. Every time I got a new character, I was always eager to take them for a test drive. So Bamtang gets a massive tick in regards to content. It's clear that they took one of the major criticisms of the first game to heart and have come back with a stellar response. However, it's all well and good to have heaps of characters and tracks, but all of that goes to waste if the game ends up controlling like Ben 10 Galactic Racing. Beach history's greatest monster! Once you start the game, you're immediately thrust into a tutorial. While pretty much every kart racer of the past 20 years just plays identically to Mario Kart, it is nice to have this right off the bat so you can adjust to Grand Prix's various quirks. You'll quickly find out which buttons will throw items, drift, and perform tricks off of jumps. It'll also introduce you to one of the major differences between it and Mario Kart. And in my opinion, this is the mechanic that really makes Nick Kart Races 2 interesting. Just a moment ago, I referred to crew members as being something you unlock. What are these exactly? 
Well, essentially they function the same as how the gameplay in Mario Kart Double Dash worked. You pick your normal kart racer, but you then pick a team of support characters who give you exclusive benefits throughout the race. For every race, you'll pick one crew chief. Every time you pass through the many areas filled with slime in a track, a meter in the top right will fill. Once fully filled, you can unleash a special ability. This could be a speed boost, a super powerful attack, or really any number of creative additions. There are quite a lot of crew chiefs, and it never feels like they're repeating ideas. They really went outside the box for this. Alongside your crew chief, you'll pick a crew engineer and a crew mechanic. Instead of charging these characters up, they instead provide constant access to their abilities. There is a slight cooldown after use, but essentially it's available all race long. Obviously, because of how often you'll be using them, the engineer and mechanic abilities are far less OP, but still just as creative and varied. So in summary, before every race, you need to choose a racer, a cart, a crew chief, your engineer and mechanic, and then several different cart parts. That might sound like a whole lot to get through, but trust me, it makes the game so much better than it otherwise would be. This intense customization is where this game shines. It creates a perfect layer of strategy and planning, both before and during the race. Not only are you trying to juggle your various stats and find a combination that suits your playstyle, but you're picking an ability that will complement it too. Once in the race, you'll then need to pick and choose when to use it. Using it prematurely could come back to bite you, while saving it for the perfect moment could be the difference between winning a race and losing a race. In my opinion, having a solid gimmick like this is what every non-Mario Kart racer needs. Let's be honest, unless you're Crash Team Racing, you're not going to even come close to touching Mario Kart in the driving mechanics. It's just not going to happen. But by adding in these unique twists on the formula and layers of strategy, you give the game a compelling hook. Now, Bamtang clearly didn't invent this crew member idea. However, I believe they take it to a more complex degree than ever before. I just really loved playing around with the combos you could create. Usually in a kart racer, I would stick to one character for the entire duration, but here I found myself switching around at every opportunity. And combining characters from wildly different franchises into one team is making my inner child go wild. Where else could you see Jojo Siwa team up with the Ninja Turtles and Catdog? Understandably, all this customization and decision making required before you go into a single race could be a little intimidating and overwhelming. Thankfully, this is still a party kart racer and not a sim racing experience. Even if you just close your eyes and blindly select things, you can still succeed thanks to the wild nature of the races in this genre. But Bamtang also includes a really helpful feature. You can get the game to suggest a specific combination for you based on who you choose as your racer and what parts you have available. These suggestions come in one of five archetypes, specializing in things like handling or drifting. It's so easy to follow and streamlines the process for those that don't want to get all nerdy. It's the perfect quality of life inclusion for kids too. Thankfully, the actual driving feels mostly solid. It's miles off Mario Kart 8 or Crash Team Racing Nitro fueled, but I'll be damned if it doesn't work well enough. I'm sure many of those in the press will slag it off because it isn't as perfect as what Nintendo can do, but expecting that is just ridiculous and foolish. It's mostly the little things that sees Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 fall back to the middle of the pack when it comes to kart racing controls. The thing I immediately felt was the drifting. It just feels a whole lot worse than the best in the genre. It also doesn't help that the drifting mechanics of Mario Kart are basically burned into my memory. I had to consciously remind myself to take corners differently. Once I managed to force my brain to stop thinking I was playing Mario Kart, I was able to get a better grip on the drifting. It's still not amazing, but again, it's serviceable enough. I also found that you lose far too much momentum and speed when bumping into other races. Sure, you should slow down if a massive character like Heffa barrels into you, but slightly touching Lincoln Loud shouldn't send you back to the speed of crawl. This causes big issues at the start of pretty much every race. Everybody gets the big starting line boost, but because the entire field of races are packed in tight, you all end up hitting each other and slowing right down. In the end, it really hurts the game's overall sense of speed. There's not nearly enough warning that you're about to drive off the track either. No, I don't mean when you drive into a bottomless pit. I mean when you end up on the grass or in the gravel. In the majority of tracks, these areas basically just blend into the proper race parts of the track. You'll take a seemingly normal corner and then start slowing down, eventually realizing that you're not supposed to be on that innocuous piece of flooring. When it comes to game modes, the wheel hasn't exactly been reinvented for Nickelodeon Kart Races 2. You have the Slime Grand Prix, Challenges, Time Trials, and Arena Mode to entertain you. Let's start with the Slime Grand Prix, which is the centerpiece of the game. Just like Mario Kart, you'll select a Grand Prix, race through four different tracks, and then get ranking points based on where you finish in the hope of sitting atop the leaderboard when it's all said and done. 
It's a tried and tested formula. There are eight Grand Prix to work your way through, and just like Mario Kart, there are different difficulties. You can tackle them on slow, medium, or fast settings, which alter the speed of the carts and the AI's competency. I was initially extremely worried about this. I started my first Grand Prix on medium, and it was awful. I absolutely blew by everyone and wasn't challenged for a single moment. I don't even want to think about how much of a pushover the slowest setting is. Thankfully, the fast setting gets it spot on. It will vary based on your own personal skills, but I found that it was the perfect level of challenge. I was being tested in every race, and while I wasn't losing Grand Prix, I was losing at least one race in almost every one that I competed in. In particular, I was getting absolutely destroyed in Jojo Siwa's level. Any kart racing veteran will likely beat the entire Grand Prix mode without suffering too many losses, but I don't think they'll be bored by it. There's enough of a challenge to keep you on your toes. Once you've had your fill of standard racing, it's time to move to the challenges. Here you'll be racing under weird sets of rules. Sometimes you'll have to break targets with projectiles, other times you'll have to maneuver from last to first in a short time frame. Again, it's nothing you haven't seen in other races before, but I found it to be a fun supplementary mode. It also serves as a way to unlock several characters too. After beating a set number of challenges on a particular list, you gain access to a boss race. This is a 1v1 race, similar to what's found in Crash Team Racing. It feels like Bamtang really went and studied other kart races in preparation for this. Most of the ideas here are unoriginal, but why reinvent the wheel when you don't have to? Time trial mode is exactly what it sounds like. In here, you'll be testing your pure racing abilities against ghost times. Lastly, we have arena mode. Yet again, borrowing from others in the genre, this is essentially the classic battle mode from Mario Kart. There are two types of games that can be played here. The first is a free-for-all deathmatch sort of setup, where you're trying to score as many hits on your opponents in the allocated time. The second game is kind of like Capture the Flag, where you need to retrieve a randomly placed spatula and hold onto it to score points. I appreciate the inclusion of this, but it's pretty meh. I've never really been a huge fan of these battle modes, so a discount version was never going to knock my socks off. I think the best part of this mode is that the two special arenas used for it are based on the Kids' Choice Awards and Double Dare. That right there is really a summary of what I like most about this game. Nickelodeon Kart Races 2 feels like a celebration of Nickelodeon. It's not perfect, and really could have stood to include characters from their iconic live action shows, but for the most part this game celebrates Nick's rich history. The last thing to mention in terms of gameplay is that you can race online. I believe the original didn't even have this, so you can finally test your skills against other Nickelodeon fans around the world. Perhaps I'll catch some of you online. I'll be the guy smoking your ass with Jojo Siwa. Presentation-wise, the game does well enough. The visuals were never going to be on the level of its high-profile counterparts, but most of the characters have been translated well into this unified 3D style, and the environments are fun to race through. The music's decent too, and I found the menus really easy to navigate, which is important considering how much customization and unlocking is going on here. It's just a solid made game from top to bottom. I wasn't expecting this, but I found Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 to be a blast to play. The game controls well enough, there is a plethora of content, and on the technical side of things, it runs perfectly. Not once in my playthrough did I run into frame rate issues or glitches. As long as you're willing to go into this with an open mind and don't expect a Mario Kart level game, I guarantee you'll get some enjoyment out of it. If you're a Nick fan who loves kart racers, go out and pick it up now. If you're somebody who isn't too big on the genre, or doesn't have a particular fondness for Nickelodeon, maybe wait for it to go on sale. And that does it for my Nickelodeon Kart Races 2 review. Bizarrely enough, the new game reviews don't stop here though. Because video game publishers seem to want to make my life as busy as possible, Ben 10 Power Trip is also releasing this week. That review will be going up in just a couple of days time, so make sure you check back in then to see the return of Cartoon Network video game history.